Pitsanger Manor was built between 1800 and 1804 in Ealing, London. Now, after a $16 million restoration, the manor once again reflects John Soane's unique designs. His distinctive use of arches is on full show, alongside his love of light and mirrors. Much of the wallpaper he chose has been restored, and there are plenty of hidden corners to explore. Born in 1753, the son of a bricklayer, Soane rose to the top of his profession and earned a knighthood in 1831. Here is a house that he designed, built and lived in himself. And Pitt's Hanger, we feel he created very much as a portfolio to show off to his clients what he could do for them. And so the lovely thing as you go around Pitt's Hanger is you see so many different elements of what makes so exciting and different. Um, his play with light and how he li uses light throughout the house, how he links with the park beyond and very much brings the park into the house. All of these things are things he, he does within Pitts Hanger in very different ways in different rooms. As well as a showcase of architectural design, Soane intended for the manor to be a place of entertainment. John Soane's distinctive style is on full show in the manor, which is full of light and hidden nooks and crannies. There's a certain kind of symmetry, therefore, in having Anish Kapoor, who's a master of optical illusion, as the first exhibition since Pitsanger reopened. Well, I didn't make this work uh, thinking about John Soane. Um, I've always, I mean, for many years now, I've made works which are mirrored. Um, but I do recognize that John Soane played visual games. I didn't intentionally set out to, to but I realized that there's a conversation. Um, and I, I think it's, I, I like that conversation. Both artists are obsessed with the use of light. The amber shade in Kapoor's work reflects perfectly Soane's amber light in the manor. But while Soane also used mirrors, it is Kapoor's work that really unbalances you. I mean, I've made works with, with mirrored surfaces, but they're always concave. So concavity has a strange space. The space, because it's concave, it has a focus that's there somewhere. And what that does to you is that beyond the focus, of course, everything's upside down. The world is turned upside down, and that's confounding. And the space is vertiginous. It makes you feel as if you're about to fall into it. And I'm rather interested in that as a, as a real bodily sensation. Both artists were incredibly influential in their generations, masters of illusion. Both are consumed with light and shape and mirrors. They may have been working more than two centuries apart, but as this exhibition shows, there are more similarities than differences. Miranda Atty, TRT World, London.